Anime was a mistake. If you're an anime fan with access to the internet, you've most likely heard this quote from legendary Japanese animation veteran Hayao Miyazaki. Obviously, the reason I'm wrapping the word quote in a set of quotation marks is because it isn't really something Miyazaki ever said. It was a comedic mistranslation of a transcript from an interview Miyazaki gave in 2014, right around the time he was winding down his career and working on his swan song, The Wind Rises. The interview was centered mostly around his work in the film, but a very interesting tangential remark is what spurred the online anime fandom into a frenzy. In short, Miyazaki lambasted his modern day anime contemporaries for being, and this time I'll use a real quote, humans who can't stand looking at other humans. Ouch. What he meant by this was pretty simple and straightforward. Miyazaki is sick of anime looking like this, and not like this. Is he wrong? Were his claims reductive and unfounded? Or is there something that the anime industry should be doing to be less grounded in their idea of what Japanese animation looks like? Hello and welcome to Anime Editorial. I'm your host Nino, and I'm here to hopefully answer at least one of those questions. Before we address what Miyazaki said in the interview, I think it would do some good to dissect the kind of person that Hayao Miyazaki is. Hayao Miyazaki has had a long-standing reputation in the anime industry for being an outspoken and verbose individual with a heavy-handed and damn near dictatorial approach to anime direction. Miyazaki is very much of the mind that a firm hand guiding a team of animators is the best possible way to produce the highest quality animation. And say what you will about his approach, but Miyazaki's track record speaks for itself in terms of overall production value. Miyazaki also has a lot of passions that have nothing to do with animation or filmmaking in general. He's a nature lover. He's been known to be passionate about the environment and has often talked about how much time he would spend playing in the fields as a young boy. He's also talked about his love of aviation and has been shown on numerous occasions to be quite the avid plane fanatic. Also, Miyazaki has on many occasions shown to be openly socially and politically conscious, a side of him that got him in hot water with the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe after some choice comments he made about Abe's policies back in 2013. He's known to be very loose-lipped about the things that bother him. This man has gone on rants from the Iraq war to the Apple iPad of all things, and it's fairly obvious that he wears his heart in his sleeve. Around the time Miyazaki made those controversial statements, a small documentary was made on the production of The Wind Rises called Kingdom of Dreams and Madness. Miyazaki Miyazaki offers his perspectives on a lot of things, such as the designs of the planes, the ideas for compositions, among other things. However, what stood out to me was this particular line. What cracks me up is that literally in the next shot, you see him and Anno goofing around with the model plane. The irony here is almost poetic, however we'll get to his relationship with Anno later. The takeaway from all this is that Miyazaki the person isn't really that invested in anime as a fan, so much as he's invested in expressing his worldview through his work, which just happens to be animation. It's perfectly reasonable to suggest that had he not wound up directing anime movies at Ghibli, he'd have taken up literature or maybe even painting since those were his other passions he had in his formative years. Despite this, Miyazaki has shown that he has a vested interest in Japanese animation, since he's talked time and time again about how he's hoping to have someone to take over for him after he's passed on from the industry. Which is interesting, like I said, Miyazaki isn't necessarily all that invested in anime, and outside of his own work, he isn't really involved in anything anime related. And unlike the vast majority of artists who work in the anime industry, his resume for the most part is situated at the hallowed halls of Ghibli. Despite this, I don't doubt that Miyazaki loves animation with all of his heart, and wants to see it flourish long after he's gone, and his gripes with the current state of affairs can be looked at as more of a pained look at the industry he loves, being caught in an Ouroboros cycle chomping at its own tail until there's nothing left. But is that really what's happening? If we take a look at the interview where most of these inflammatory statements were made, we can see pretty clearly where Miyazaki's gripes lie. The cultural impetus in the anime industry to create anime that follows certain industry trends and styles that instead of reflecting the world and cultural ideals of the people making them, are meant to reflect other anime and the ingrown insider understanding that has become commonplace in the anime industry. I don't have a source for this, but I wouldn't be surprised if Miyazaki doesn't care much for works such as The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, Bakemonogatari or Lucky Star. Not because he might think they're bad shows, but that they're more of a product of anime nowadays being made by fans of other anime. 
because and this is not meant to be pejorative in any sense but Miyazaki is old he's 75 at the time I'm writing this and many people who studied his life know that he didn't grow up wanting to make anime Miyazaki may have been making most of his major moves in the 70s and 80s working on multiple projects under Toei Animation however he didn't grow up consuming said media and thus wasn't really invested in the fan side of anime which is interesting because one of Miyazaki's longtime anime industry friends is none other than Hideaki Yano a man notorious for making anime filled with references to all facets of geek culture from Star Wars to Godzilla as well as many other anime some of which were worked on by none other than our friend here. In the 1980s, anime went through what can be described as a sort of renaissance, with the production of works such as Macross, Space Runaway Ideon, the original Cyborg 009, the rise of Studio Gainax and the popularization of the term otaku among anime fans, anime and the culture around it were shifting from just the medium of Japanese animation to a full-blown intricate subculture in and of itself. Much like how American filmmaking in the 60s and 70s saw the rise of the film brats such as Coppola, Spielberg, Lucas and Kubrick, directors who had grown up enjoying films in their childhood and ended up going to school specifically to make movies, anime saw a similar thing happen in the 80s where talents such as the founding members of Gainax, Mikimuto Haruhiko, Kawamori Shoji, Masahiko Minami and Hiroshi Osaka among others got their big breaks. Young talent that grew up watching the works of industry veterans such as Miyazaki while being heavily invested in anime fan culture who are also, and this is important, students of animation who graduated from various Japanese art colleges. I say this is important because that's where a critical shift occurred, not only in the way anime was made, but in the types of people making it. Prior to becoming the godfather of anime, Osamu Tezuka went to medical school. Miyazaki himself graduated with a poli sci degree. The forerunners of Japanese animation, while skilled and passionate about their craft, were often not art students first and foremost, and since the 80s, this has changed drastically. The fans were now the ones making the shows. The inmates, for better or for worse, were running the asylum. So what did this mean for the medium? Well for one, since the people who are making anime had been consuming it for most of their lives, they would often make references within the works they produced that called back to certain shots, animation cuts and techniques they saw in the works they admired. Which ended up leading into a monkey see monkey do effect that led to said techniques getting used over and over again to the point where instead of just being references, there was coming to the medium now the same way any typical cinematic technique would be. Things such as the Eternal Circus, the Obari pose, the Obari Punch, Gatai Cuts, Magical Girl Transformations, Facial Frame Cuts in Mecha Shows, and countless other intricate little animation quirks that found their start in the anime of the 70s and 80s became the bread and butter for creators all the way up until today. This is partially where I think Miyazaki's statement about otaku only caring about other anime and not the world around them was sparked from. Miyazaki didn't grow up in a world where decades of anime had preceded him. Instead, he grew up having experiences that would influence the anime that would themselves go on to influence the same animators he's ironically frustrated with. I once heard a Canadian artist named Sakura Yasin say something along the lines of, the Japanese anime style of drawing is somewhat inbred. Instead of iterating on life drawing the way traditional cartoonists do, it iterates upon itself. This line of thinking fits perfectly with Miyazaki's problems. He outright states that the animators of today are more interested in themselves, meaning to say that they're less invested in the world around them and more invested in the world of anime out there to draw influence from. That's why the look of anime stagnates every few years until certain design trends come along that pushes the medium forward. Anime of the 80s had thicker outlines, a generally less clean aesthetic and higher color contrast. Anime of the 90s carried on a lot of those traits from the 80s, except they started to experiment more with character designs that reflected the new age of shonen manga of that era. The early 2000s were generally a rough transitional period for most studios still getting the hang of digital animation and nowadays your average show bears the same clean, slightly overproduced and flashy aesthetic most commonly seen in your typical A1 picture shows. I'm aware I'm speaking in very broad strokes and there are shows that have buck trends no matter what era they were made in. However the point still stands, in general anime evolves not really based on animation trends from any other sphere but in the bubble that it inhabits. That's one of the reasons why people refer to Japanese animation as a medium separate from all other kinds, however all this is a topic for another time. Aside from all this, the way modern anime is produced with many different artists hopping from studio to studio and producing hundreds of animation cuts for hundreds of different shows within any given year is also antithetical to Miyazaki's production ethic, which as I discussed earlier is that of a single staff being led by the direction of a firm hand the way Ghibli movies are. This shines through in the production of his films. In many typical anime you can see the stylistic flourish of certain animators when they put their hands in a certain work. The stylized fluidity of Yoyoshinari, the cartoony bomb Bast of Imaishi, the whatever this is of Shinya Ohira. However, in Miyazaki's and to a larger extent in pretty much all of Ghibli's work, 
All the animation cuts seem to be drawn with very little creative addition from the animators and very specific instructions from the animation direction staff. But regardless of all the industry jargon, does Miyazaki have a point? Is modern anime failing because of its connection to otaku culture? It really depends who you ask. In my opinion, despite anime looking like it's been in a one track rut for a long time, this really is one of the most diverse eras of Japanese animation in recent memory, thanks in no small part to specialized studios and programming blocks in place to try and keep doing something new. Without studios like Shaft, KyoAni and Mappa, as well as programming blocks like Noitamina there to breathe some freshness into the landscape, I'd be more inclined to agree with Miyazaki, yet as it stands, I think we're doing pretty alright. However, Miyazaki isn't really all that wrong with what he said. There are a lot of otaku working in the industry and they are very much taking cues from other shows in their work rather than looking at the world around them. Yet that's not the entirety of the medium, and that's not all that anime is. Miyazaki surely hasn't been keeping track of works such as Psychopaths, Tatami Galaxy and the Hosoda films or any of Makoto Shinkai's work if he really thinks that's the case. All in all, no Miyazaki sensei, anime wasn't a mistake. It just happens to make them from time to time. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more content like this, and until then, sign Aramina san, thanks for watching.